guys, I'm almost in shock. Look what we have here. We have the new Nissan Z. I can't believe that I have this car for a week to drive around and get the feel off. And I feel like I'm doing the environment a service when I drive this around because it's such a stunning design and it has so many design cues and features that are throwbacks to the old Z so of more than 50 years going back specifically the 240 Z's and you can just see that with this gorgeous roofline and that sword of blade the, the, the blade that cuts through that to kind of really hammer in that uh, they, that the designers of the Z really had that roofline of the Z in mind. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna talk about the design. We're gonna start in the rear and then we're gonna work our way to the side and then also of course the front view. So let's get to it. Starting in the rear we have of course these gorgeous taillights that are inspired by the Nissan 300ZX. And we also have the single logo on the rear which is apart from the Nissan badge which just says Z and that is of course the name of the Z these days. And I love how this graphic, black graphic, goes from one side to the other. It just creates more width in the design. And if we go lower down, we have this nice diffuser here, which is all black on every single trim level that you get with the Z. And what that does, if we look at it from a side view, it just cuts off some of the mass of the design. It makes it look thinner in the rear graphically, specifically in low light, or if you have, for example, uh, a, a black, darker background, it's gonna look like it's lighter in the rear. And I really love that they implemented this big graphic feature that is the lower diffuser into this design. And this is, of course, the Z Performance. So you have the Z uh, Sport, then you have the Z Performance. And this is the higher trim level. So this costs around $50,000. And I think that's a fantastic value for what you get. It feels super quick. You have 400 horsepower and this comes with the manual, which I have here as well. So we're gonna take it out for our drive a little later. But first of all, let's continue here with the design. We have this gorgeous rear fender that stretches into the rear end and it's kind of a smooth line. It doesn't have any sharp lines in it, but we do have a sharp line that goes up right here. And then I wanna show you this, it kind of fades in. So it continues with this line on top of the headlight. It's a very beautiful treatment of this design. And it creates a dynamic looking design, looking at it from a side view. It just has this forward motion when you look at it from a side view. And also, of course, the side view for a Z, very special view specifically in this car. And not so much in the 370Z. They kind of lost a little bit of that design, Z design, heritage design. But here it's definitely back. And they even put in this which is this silver piece right here to kind of emphasize that they did not forget about how a Z roofline should look like straight down and then straight cut in the rear end. The performance comes with this spoiler here in the rear, which I think looks good. Uh, not necessarily a, you know, a, a must for me when I look at the design. It would look pretty good without that as well and more classic. And in addition to the black graphic, the diffuser in the rear end, we also have this lower graphic right here, which kind of cuts into the mess that is the body color and the lines of the mess of this car and makes it also look a little thinner. I love these 19 inch wheels that you get on the performance. On the normal version, the base model, you get 18 inch wheels. So they are a little uh, smaller, the wheel size. And they, I really think you need 19s for this car to really fill out the wheelhouses. And this design just looks really good. I would prefer to have them in the bronze Z color because I think that's more of a special color than this uh, black. I think this metallic black, it still looks good. And then we have the uh, brake calipers in red as well and a little bigger brakes on the performance than we have on the base model. Now moving on to the front view. I don't know if you can see it in this super strong sunlight, but we have this V shape right here, which is a clear throwback, of course, to the 240Z. One of these details that I love about this design that they put into this design. And it, I just love this car because of that fact that this feels like a car that designers actually had a lot of fun designing and I think we need more cars like this out on the road and you know that a lot of uh, the interior pieces of the uh, Z was actually taken over from the 370Z we're gonna talk more about that but continuing here in the front view we do have this grill that I don't know if you remember the Z Proto it had all black in the front end and here we have a little bit of a color difference so the top part right here as you can see is now silver or gunmetal 
And that's one of the changes that I wanted to make when I talked about the Z Proto in the first video when it first came out was to maybe, if we look at it from a straight front view, it looks very squarish, like a big hole in the front end. So we can work with some graphic features and graphic design to kind of make it more interesting and maybe not have it be so squarish all black and i think they did a great job solving that problem by adding some silver on top on the top half of this grill it kind of creates that um uh, section that we had in the 240z the 240z obviously had a chrome bumper in the front end which we can't have on a 2023 model but we can still work with graphic design and try to solve it in that way now i can't talk about this car without comparing it to of course the toyota supra what i think nissan did a right a better decision with is the treatment of the air intakes so we have one air intake in the front and that's it and this is actually functional here so we don't have any fake vents on the nissan uh, z and i think that is a great decision by nissan they could have easily made for example you see this cut right here into the front bumper this could have easily made put some black plastic here and call it a fake vent but they decided to not do that and i think that's the right approach from nissan and looking at the front headlights as you know this is definitely inspired as well by the nissan 240z it's not round it's like this uh, they had a version with of the 240z that had this plastic cover on it and i think this looks really cool specifically when you look at it when it's turned on and you look at it from a front view it actually creates almost like a circle right there so you have almost like a circular uh, headlight daytime running like when you look at it from a straight front view but if we go closer you can see that it's a pretty complex design here with these two you have this lower part and then this top part creating a different shape when you look at it from this side and when you go straight front view it almost creates a perfect circle which i think is really cool and definitely a throwback to the 240. all right guys let's jump in and let's talk about this interior design so i want to show you a couple of things in here that uh, maybe some people would have a problem with but that i don't have a problem with at all and that is the fact of course let's turn on the ac first of all it's cooking in here it's i don't know how hot it is outside but when you jump in here if you owned a 370z for example you're gonna be very familiar with this interior but it works really great and the thing is if nissan were, were uh, gonna make a new z they had to take some stuff from the 370z for example this entire door panel right here is essentially straight out of a uh, 370z you have the same uh, door handles here vents and these uh, things right here the the window switches stuff like that also these ac controls down here are straight from the 370z as well and i think i'm not sure the seats are from the 370 but it doesn't matter because they decided to do that to reduce the price and this the performance version starts at fifty thousand dollars which i think is a fantastic deal it's two thousand lower than the toyota supra and you still have the new display in the center in the center gauge cluster and also the new display right here so everything you need for a sports car it's here yes you might have seen these before but who really cares when you have such a fun car to drive and that's what we're going to do in the next video so make sure you subscribe if you want to see the driving portion of uh, this segment of the nissan z because that's going to be in the next video the display right here you have three different settings you have sport as you can see right there if you switch it to normal looks like that and then we have a final one which looks uh, a little bit weird actually <laughs> but it looks like this right there so you have almost like a 3d version of the tachometer and the speedometer and i like them because i love ellipses i love to sketch ellipses and this looks pretty cool not sure how functional it is i definitely prefer the sport setting right here where you have the big tachometer in the center and you also have a g meter there which you can change to whatever you want and the speedometer up here in the top right corner up here you have these cool uh, little gauges which i also love you have the turbo boost and they have turbo speed which is interesting and they have the voltmeter for the battery and also one one other thing i want to note here is we have soft touch material right here if you can see that which is 
something that I really appreciate. They didn't need to put the soft material in here. You have soft material right here as well. Not as soft as this one up here, but it's not solid, hard, cheap plastic. Then some Alcantara down here in the door, which is nice. And it comes with the manual shifter right here, which feels really good and tight. And you have the automatic rev matching here with this button right here when you downshift, which is absolutely a bliss to drive with this uh, rev matching on because it works so well. Other than that, in the interior, there's really not a lot to say about this interior. It's really simple and it's not, I don't want it to be the focus of the uh, new Z. I want that to be the driving experience. By the way, this steering wheel, of course, also brand new. Let's have a look at the trunk and let me show you the space you get in the rear as well while we're, while we're talking about the interior. So you open it by just sticking in your hand underneath the Nissan logo and it pops up. I had some problems with this because I was trying to lift here because I thought this was the cut line, section line for the trunk, but it's actually up here. So it's only the top part that lifts up. And this is what it looks like from the rear. Pretty much all you need, I would say, for a two-person sports car. You can also use the space that are right behind the driver, the driver and passenger seat right here. And of course you have this entire space right here to fill up with whatever you need. I have my camera gear in there right now. So nothing too crazy when it comes to uh, the uh, luggage space right here. And there's a remote controlled fighter jet. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Very, very cool. Anyway, there's really not a lot to say about this interior space as well. It's very simple, but this car, as I said, it's all about the driving. So if you want to see the driving portion of uh, this uh, review of the Nissan Z, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do a POV drive with the Nissan Z and I want to really talk about the driving experience in this car to kind of make you feel like you're in the car with me driving it and that's it for this design review of the nissan z thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video